Okay, what is this thing? Where did you get that thing? <laughs> Um, this was sent in to me uh, by the company who makes it. Uh, they are not a sponsor. I'm free to say what I want, uh, but they did donate it to the channel. And it is an RF power snitch. And the snitch is what a lot of people want. This will tell you whether this incoming signal is too high for your tiny SA or your nano VNA or your regular VNA, your regular uh, spectrum analyzer, or whatever. It'll tell you if you're in the safe zone or in the danger zone, right? And so that's what a lot of people have been asking for. Now, this is not going to measure absolute power, but it's going to tell you whether you're too high, you're in a kind of in a danger zone, or whether you're in a good zone. And so that's what it's going to do. It just lights up some LEDs, you know, like a green LED for good, a red LED for bad. It's going to do something like that. And um, so what we'll do is we'll hook it up and see if it does as predicted. Um, it'll light up at some points. We'll see how um, stable it is with... Um, uh, frequency. So I can imagine building one of these that's good over, you know, a few megahertz, but making a really, really broad one that goes up to a gigahertz would be difficult. And so we'll see how well they do with that. So I'll uh, take it over to the test bench and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's turn it on. It's a cute little thing. It's uh, just a PC board uh, powered up with a USB and uh, it's got a little clear thing here so you don't smash into it. Yeah, it's, it's a cute little design. Um, okay, let's go. Okay, let's try this thing out. Uh, so I have a USB uh, coming in, powered up. It's a USB um, USB uh, micro. Um, and I've connected the SMA to a BMC cable, and we're uh, gonna be measuring the output of the uh, uh, function generator. And so let's, it's giving us a green light, so it says everything is good. So I'm gonna start out at one megahertz just for fun. And we will set the amplitude. Uh, it's at minus 13 dBm right now. And I will increase it until it goes to there. It's, that's happening at uh, minus 9 dBm. So what it's doing is the, the green light is just dim, but the yellow and the red are very bright. And if I continue to go up, uh, right there, the green light turned off and the yellow light went dim and the red light came really, really bright. So that must be danger, danger. And that's happening at 1 dBm, so that's good. That's kind of like my rule of thumb. It's, uh, you, really want, you really want to uh, keep everything below, uh, below 0 dBm. And so that's, uh, that's how it works. Uh, if it's low, it's green. And if it's too high, it's red. And if it's in the middle, then it's kind of this yellowy thing. Okay, so maybe that's like for best signal to noise, right? So that, that would make sense. It's like, okay, that's low but good. Uh, but if I'm in the yellow, then it's high but still okay. And that might be a good thing for you to be, be aware of. But anyway, uh, let's see if it... Um, what I'm really curious about is how flat it is with frequency. So let's do something crazy. Let's, let's take the entire range of the, uh, of let's say the tiny SA. And so we'll start at 10 kilohertz and it goes all the way up to what, 90, 960 megahertz, something like that. So we'll take it to a gigahertz. And that's what my test equipment in my, in my garage, well, I can go higher than that. I can go to 2.4 gigahertz, but, but for now, let's try the, uh, the instruments that I've got right now, let's try the one gigahertz. So, uh, let's do frequency of 10, 10 kilohertz, and we'll do amplitude, and we're, we're green. Put my hand in the way of the camera, I hope not. There we go, it's going yellow at minus 10, and it's going red at 2. So it's a dB off. Um, but for a go no go check, a dB is fine. It, it's telling us exactly what, what we want it to, uh, we, what we want to tell us. Uh, I'll try to keep my hand out of the way here. Okay, so 10 megahertz, uh, 10 kilohertz works. A megahertz works, and then this will go up to 10 megahertz. So let's do that. Well, let's do some hand bands. Let's do three megahertz. Uh, so frequency, enter three megahertz. Let's try that. Uh, 
it's going yellow at minus nine and red at plus one. Okay, fine. Now let's do seven megahertz. Uh, frequency um, seven megahertz. Amplitude uh, goes yellow at minus nine and it goes red at at one. So it's fine. Uh, then this could go up with the 15. So let's, well, let's do 14 here. We can go up pyro on my other one. Uh, let's see here. So we'll do frequency 14 megahertz amplitude uh, goes yellow at minus nine and it goes red at plus one. So it works great from uh, audio to 15 megahertz and acts about the same. So let's try it at higher frequencies and see how it does. Okay, uh, let's see here. I have it set to uh, 10 megahertz right now. Uh, let's do the amplitude on this, on this one. Uh, let's see, divide by 10, so there we go. Uh, it's green. Uh, it goes yellow at minus 10 and it goes red at zero, uh, no, plus one. So same as the other one, same as the other one. So let's go up in frequency. Uh, let's see where we stop at 50. Yes, let's do hundred megahertz. Uh, 100. Let's go back here. So hundred megahertz. Uh, we get green. We're green at minus 11, it goes to yellow at minus 10, and goes to red at zero. So the same. Let's go to uh, 500 megahertz. Uh, 500. Okay, 500. Uh, green goes yellow at minus 9, and red at Plus one, same. Now let's do gigahertz. Uh, 1,000. And amplitude. There's green. And, okay, it's a little bit different now. It's changing at minus eight. And interesting, it gives little flashes there. Oh, because I'm, my generator's probably kind of between things. And then it goes to red at plus two. So it does have a little bit of nonlinearity with uh, frequency, but um, nothing to worry about. Um, for what it's doing, it's doing exactly what, it, what it's meant to be designed for. It's keeping you out of trouble. If it's red, do not hook it up to a spectrum analyzer. And if it's yellow, then at your own risk. And if it's green, you're, you're certainly good to go. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It, uh, it's, it's behaving really well. All right, what am I doing with it? So remember I told you that power meters should look like a perfect 50 ohm load. And so let's see if it looks like a perfect 50 ohm load. So we're using the uh, VNA and it is not a perfect 50 ohm load, but uh, it is certainly very good. Um, I have the cursor right now set to 52 megahertz. Now, if I was building a power sensor, I would want to be below minus 20 dBm uh, return loss, and, and that happens at 152, uh, 152 megahertz. It's measuring uh, 47.8 um, ohms. And if we move out here, uh, it's measuring, uh, let's see here, uh, 26 ohms and 20 ohms. So it's definitely uh, goes on, over onto the low side. You can see it there on the uh, on the uh, Smith chart. And so uh, it's not a great power meter, but it's doing what it's doing, and it's uh, uh, it probably accounts for that. And it's doing a good job. Like I said, it's only about a dB off, you know, no matter where you are. And so yeah, it's doing a it's doing a good job. Let's uh, let's reverse engineer the circuit. All right, this is my schematic. Um, 
Uh, this is the input and it goes into a pad and there's some odd values here, 62 and 56 to fine tune into a, a, a total uh, resistance to ground that they wanted, 18 ohms, a 91 and an 82, once again trying to hone into what they wanted. And then there's the detector diode, probably some type of Schottky diode. Um, and then the capacitors, so this is the detector here, uh, and they're keeping it all nice and symmetric. And then there's some funniness that'll going on here. There's a uh, uh, an inductor that's actually uh, on the PC board, uh, layout inductor uh, to um, isolate these two because you want to measure this point. And then there's a little bit of compensation here. I don't know if that's frequency compensation or whatever, but uh, there's there's a uh, a bleed resistor on the uh, on the detector, so it doesn't just float. So it, it'll it'll come down after you remove power. So that's 270k, and then some type of uh, capacitor here. So anyway, it all seems to make sense, and uh, it goes into a really nice op amp front end, an OPA 33E3, and so that does the uh, inspection of this voltage here. And then it's run into an LM393, which is a dual comparator. And there's two voltage references that are set up by LM431s. We've seen those before. So there's one for one op amp and one for the other op amp. And then depending on if the signals are above or below, they kind of have a window, uh, a window comparator. And they turn on the uh, red, yellow, and the green LEDs. So that's all there is to it. That's it. All right. So my evaluation is a, it's a nice product. Um, it's, uh, I'll put a link uh, in the description below if you'd like to buy one of these things. Uh, it does come from the Netherlands, so it might be a little slow to get. Um, it's 20 euros, uh, and I believe it was 10 euros shipping. So a total of 30 euros to, uh, to pick up one of these. Uh, cool little devices, thumbs up. Uh, it's very basic, but it, uh, it does what it does.